when I curated the show, I wanted to um, make sure that the work looked as presented well as possible. Some curators get so experimental that they make the art like a tube of paint, like, a, like, like when you're a painter, you just take that tube of paint. You know, it's an inanimate object. Well, a lot of curators treat artists like that. They treat you like a tube of paint for their show. You know, you're just part of their thing. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to honor these two artists. And I wanted to kind of, um, you know, I guess you say oil on canvas gets a bad rap for being um, conservative. And I, I, don't, I don't buy that just changing the formal medium of the work suddenly makes it radical and therefore better than painting. And I'm, I'm very pro-painting. Uh, not that I'm against other forms, I'm just the idea that there's a radicality to, say, performance art that doesn't exist in painting is totally, totally pretentious. So, but I wanted to have a show that was unconventional with, with, with and still keeping it ele elevated, di elevated visual dialogue for the artists. So the first thing, when I looked at the space, I wanted to look at, like, that to me was the most important thing, is how do I activate the space and make it most interesting? So I've been to a lot of shows here at the museum, so I was kind of familiar with the, the space. I love the floor, which, it, it was a flooring sh store before this, so when you visited, they would say, do you want this kind for your kitchen, or this kind, you know? So, so I love the floor, and, but this thing I hate. Okay, this thing on wheels, see, it, it moves out, out. So normally, when you walk in a museum, they have the front door open and they have this thing in front. So I, and then, and then there's a kitchen back here, a little social area. I said, no socializing! So, so, um, so I moved this here to activate the space and give it like this, it's a, a much, a much bigger space. And it's not even any bigger, it's, it, basically once this wall's here, you know, it ends up, it ends up about here and then they even move it back a little and it, it you know, it, it's, it's only a few feet, but that few feet is important. So, um, so that was the starting point. Um, I had two artists and I decided that um, I normally don't like what's called what I call a showcase show uh, as a curator a showcase exhibit is where it, it's, this is really bad with like when there's shows of like six artists and they all have a, ex, you know a couple works and they'll do you know you know three by this person here you know the, the, the three by this person there and you, you, it's called it's a showcase it's just this person that person so I wanted to like integrate as curatorially I, I integrate I like to like put it all together like like um, like soup you know just throw in every ingredient and um, not like a buffet where okay here's this artist and here's that artist I just it's like when you pull up the soup you get them all um, but these two artists it, you know I tried a few permutations of these artists together in that way and it, it wasn't working out so I thought it would be best to divide the room in a way that just, there was this energy no matter where you went. So it wasn't like a classic showcase of this artist will look good over your couch and this artist will look good in your small museum in the back room, none of that stuff. So I wanted to, to activate the whole space. So I think it's important for a curator to approach, as long as they respect the artist and always elevate the fact that the artist uh, should have the work presented in a great light. I do think it's good to present, to, to approach uh, an art show like an artist would a painting or a sculpture. Like, I'm going to make this thing. This is my, my I made my painting with your paintings. So um, what, I, what I emphasize with, by, by dividing them here was having everything together in it created an energy by having so much of a person. So it wasn't just like a conventional show of like, you know, you can have this painting, it should be on a center line, you know, but there's an electrical outlet here. And then this, this why do we have a painting over here? But I wanted to just have too much, just too much. So I just, uh, just started, we started putting these up and it almost didn't matter where we put them, okay? And I know so many people, when they're doing shows, they spend hours, does this one look good to that one? 
Does this, you know what, when you have the good art, I mean the energy of this art, people would have normally set it apart from each other. It has to be on a 57 inch center line, and this one has to be next to it, and it should be about two feet apart. And, it, and we've all been to that show. How is art gonna move if we keep curating yesterday's show? So I wanna do, you know, this is like, let's, let's try something different. Because here's the thing, I've curated a lot of shows, and I look back on some of them as like, eh, eh, okay, I would have done this different, I would have done that different, but I want, you know, I want to push as far as structuring the show. And um, in fact, that's one of the reasons I don't like um, track lighting. I mean, the track lighting here is great, but, but like for my space in Chinatown, we have fluorescent lighting. We just use day-rated bulbs, so it, it, it's the same light frequency as if there were skylights. Because, you know, I just want this all over thing. I don't want this, here's an artwork with a light on it. Here's an artwork with a light on it. I want it to be an art experience. Um, now, this approach works for these artists. The next time you come to my gallery in Chinatown and everything's on a 57 inch center line in a space a couple feet apart, don't go, no, he's going, but every artist, I mean, it requires, there's certain requirements. And the energy in these artworks and the fact that there was nudity, but it's a very unconventional nudity in both these artists, I felt was, it was important um, to emphasize like just something a little wilder, you know, like, hey, we're all naked here, you know, except the curator. So, um, so, so when I moved this here, um, I figured this was like, that's how we're gonna divide the room here. We're gonna, we're gonna basically make it all Anna here and all Lena there. And so, um, you know, I mean, I could have put all Lena here and all Anna there. I don't even, I don't know why I picked, I mean, it was just like, okay, we'll just, I mean, it was probably what happened is when, uh, when um, Anna delivered her work, it was probably stacked here already. So we just, you know what I mean? These things, sometimes it's an organic thing. It's, I've seen things where curators make the, um, the little cardboard construction, like an architect, you know, and then they make like, okay, and the painting's this big. The Gerhard Richter documentary. Gerhard Richter, you know, he's got a show with like eight paintings and he's sitting there with like this diorama and these photographs of each painting. Like, you know, and it's like, oh my God. I'd show up a couple days before and go, okay, put the green one there. Don't you know? Don't put the blue one next to the green one. Duh. You know. So, um, but so with with Anna, we actually started here. I, I, I actually, I, we, we, I knew that this was going to be here, and I did this last. But but starting to hear it, knowing that this was Anna, we hung this wall first. So what we did is there weren't enough of these drawings to make a complete wallpaper. So we actually hung these artworks this way. And if you notice, they're not on a center line, they're on a top line. So I just wanted that whole, like, uh, the energy of, of the, I wanted the paintings kind of looking down at you, like, like, and again, anytime you're dealing with the nude, I mean, I believe that all art is political, so anytime you're dealing with the nude, especially, there is a politics of the body. And so I wanted the I wanted that looking down on you. I wanted there to be a bit of an empowerment because these are women painting nudity, and that is fundamentally different than men painting nudity. I mean, that that's really a biological uh, conundrum uh, because uh, no, no, because because you're you're you know you're you're talking the difference between you know the predator and the nurturer. You know, I mean things like that. I mean, you could do all day about the real. Um, break between the way a man looks at a female nude and a woman looks at a female nude. A woman's far more formalist too. So I certainly wanted to have a lot of them higher up, you know, so it wasn't this, the, 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 the power of the male gaze, you know. So I wanted it, you know, so these are, these are, um, by having this top thing, it's a design element. By having everything, instead of a center line, having it at the top, it, it goes down. So when you walk up, these are above you. Even if you're tall, they're still kind of above you. So we made this wall, we, we hung these first and then took them down and there's like pencil lines so that we could, we could hang everything. And I say we, I didn't hang a damn thing. Brian, Brian Chagoy on my gallery director in Chinatown, who's, he's a great art show hanger. He came in here and we just blasted through this. Uh, it, was, it was a very easy hang once I was able to, or, I organically solved these problems. But so we hung these around so it looks like there's this wallpaper of men kind of, they're bland, and just, you know, there's just one color, and then there's these dynamic women, they're like, you know, so it's, it, it created a push-pull installation. 
And the men, I mean, actually, most of these ones aren't naked. And then we, we separated, so we found all these. Uh, and Anna, literally, she just gave us folders full of stuff. There was other stuff we could have, I mean, I could have done different stuff here. There was a lot to choose from. There was a lot of little ones we could have sprinkled about, little colored uh, uh, painting nudes. But, um, you know, it just ended up this way. So these black and whites, these are, they're actually having sex, but it's emphasizing the man. You don't even know who's necessarily having sex with. Um, and so, you know, we put the woman as just this primary focus. And again, is this empowered where it's one woman who's had many lovers or all sorts of stuff? I mean, there's, there's many uh, possibilities here. And I wanted to kind of emphasize that. Um, and then in this wall, each, each uh, painting here, we kind of had, if we had just hung it in the middle, it would have been boring, you know, especially after this really dynamic wall. So I did think it was interesting, and I don't know if any of these match. This, this one, this one matches for sure. But the, you know, it's so it's kind of a curatorial narrative on this wall. What I'm really kind of going after is, like, is this the this woman? Is this her later? You know, is this like you know, this is the one that you can control because it's small. But this is the one that's this. It's it's the same woman. You know, I mean. Every day we're a different person in a lot of ways, you know, as we grow or as we devolve. And so then um, in the other room we have some big, some of the really large work and we ended up with, uh, I think this was the only one that we had extra, so I thought this would be perfect to put here. We were going to hang and then I go, oh, you know, we still have so many of these, let's, let's just do something interesting. It was just a little like, I wanted the show to be, to have a flair relative to how it was presented. And again, it's, you know, the nude, as radical as it may be politically, because look, we're all wearing clothes right now, right? So, you know, unless you're watching Ted's video. Are you watching this? Do you have clothes on? Okay. So um, you, you want to, like, look at art as unconventional, but the nude's pretty conventional. So if, we, if you just walked in and there were these nice nudes, you know, hung, it, it, I had to give it some, some sizzle here, you know. Um, now, Lane is a little more, uh, the subject matter is a little more radical relative to, there's at, there, are, there are definite uh, themes of uh, same-sex couples. Like, for example, in Anna's paintings, uh, the, the beautiful, they're beautiful women. We don't, is that woman, is she gay? Well, I don't know. Is she, you know, does she have multiple, just yes, two women, we know, okay? So, right there, Lane is, Lane is a little more, um, a little less ambiguous. Um, there's some narrative, pseudo-narrative over here where is this, you know, there's a naked man with two women with clothes. Is, I mean, does that weaken, does that empower women? I mean, what's going on here? So um, her work was a little uh, like, well, you know, it's already weird, I guess. <laughs> that, you know, is that good? Is that good? Okay, I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. Weird, so, I, yeah. Yeah, so... But, you know, how do you hang it? You know, like, do, I mean, she didn't frame it. You know, I mean, it's very, with Anna's, you have these paintings on um, the canvas. It's very easy. It cooperates. But this, this paper doesn't, I mean, look, it's, it's already, it's curling up. If there, it, you know, it's, we had a dry winter. If it had been really humid. I mean, one time, I took art to Miami, works on paper, and we just, you know, hung it up with the magnets, and we're like, hey, we're from L.A., everybody, we got some cool art, and then, like, we, you know, we, oh, let's go out to lunch, and okay, the show's gonna open tonight, and we, we're walking up to the booth with a half hour before the show opens, and all the paper pieces have curled, because it's so humid, it's like, and you're, oh my god, and the, there we are at the last minute, getting our booth ready, thinking we're gonna, uh, so, so, anytime you have this paper, you have to start wondering, you know, what's gonna happen with it? And I, I can see the difference with this art just having hung here from when like we started, just the, phys the physical like curling of it. And so I knew it, knew well enough to like not, you know, when you have it space, like I didn't know that this was gonna happen necessarily, but I knew not to like, if they start pushing each other, you don't want that. So there's a way to hang stuff like this. We got this guy pretty flat back here. We got lucky with him. So, um, but I wanted to create this energy. We have, this one is, if you notice, I kept them all kind of like, these guys are all over here. I think there's one of them over here. There's like one or two of them over here. But the interesting thing to me is, in addition to the nudity with Lena, there is prop, there are props. 
and they're really subtle, but they're thorough. Like the the this is because this show is called Butt Naked. You don't even. I mean, this is actually it's a painting of this. He's kind of like he may as well be one of these. Like is that is that that's a painting on the wall in the painting, or is it a window or a doorway or or whatever? But it's really a painting of this thing, this prop. You see, and so. What that really does conceptual, not like conceptual art, but the, but the fundamental thing, like, is when nudity is not the subject of an artwork, when nudity is included in an artwork, but it's not the subject, when it, nudity is subordinate, nudity is like this, like, you know, they, Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, you know, for being naked, you know, I mean, they were, sh they were, you know, it's like, there's a whole psychology of nudity, and, and if you ever see, um, uh, Spencer Tunick's documentary where he did these, he has these large groups of people pose naked. And um, so he went to a nudist colony because he fi figured that was the place that you could get the most nudists. And it was the only time he couldn't get a shot off because they were all so narcissistic. Mm -hmm. So the people who would really embrace being in the nudist colony were the least cooperative subjects. It's a great documentary of him going around. So, but nudity itself, like people use nudity as a power thing, as a way to control. Uh, as a you know, way to force the issue. But when nudity is subordinate to like a chair, to a bluebird, you know, to a curtain, I mean, it, all of a sudden it's like, is it disempowered? Is it more empowered? And it's very scary to some people in power when nudity is ordinary, you know? I mean, you know, fascistic regimes generally, what? Got it, got okay. it. Okay. <laughs> But, but fascistic re regimes try to, they try to like crush, you know, nudity. There's no pornography, you know, like they say with the difference between China and the United States is prostitution is illegal here, but pornography is legal. And there pornography is illegal, but prostitution is legal. So I didn't think that they worked well together. I, I, I thought that there was so much charge and electricity in both of these artists that it was, it was good to have them separate, but not showcased. So I just wanted to think, so no matter where you were, there was no place where you weren't confronted with this energy. And um, back to when you see, back to, <laughs> back to land. Um, like when you see photos, um, like on social media from the opening and it's like, you know, people are just, they're standing by one artwork. I, I don't, you don't get that this, this was meant to be an experiential thing, which is why, that's why I physically move the wall. And when you're here, you're like in it, you know, you're totally in it. And so, um, and that's why I did the show the way I did. So, so uh, Anna, do you have anything to say about your art? Um, well, I want to say something about working with you because I think that Lena and I decided, you know, when Lena, Lena asked me if I would show with her and I, I was just so, you know, complimented and humbled and, but we talked right away about finding a curator because, you know, we all hang our work so often and we know how we hang it, and it's boring. And so having him, you know, talk to us, talk us through things, through, you know, on the phone, text, like I would text him things, I would I send him pictures, and he would write back these little things, and then just to give him a pile of stuff and give up control, that's so exciting. Like, I couldn't care less. You could have torn everything up, well. <laughs> no, but just put it in a big pile. And I would have been happy with that because I don't want to see my work in the same way that I always show it by myself. You know, you know as a curator, I will say this. It's shocking to me how artists don't trust anybody, and especially with their art, and, and, and how liberating it gets once you learn to just trust people. Like, okay, give a dealer, look, just here, do whatever you want with it. I'll be back in, in a year, you know, or a curator with the, with the show. So that's what I, and I was pretty much like, look, this is how I work. You're gonna give me the stuff, and then, you know, like when you were, I was like, go, go, go. She was, I mean, this is your place, and I was like, go, 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 right? No, I said, go, go, go. Do whatever you want. <laughs> she, she knew, we, she we, knew. We did it, yeah, like, whatever you want. No, but that was from the, from the, from the, first, uh, from the first studio visit with you. Uh, the first studio visit I did at Anna's uh, was, um, I was like, look, if you've got all these works on paper, you know, that they make a great counter to these paintings. Because the paintings are, it's the painting. It's, you know, and if we just have the painting, we've got this kind of like, like, I call it museum aspirin. When you hang your art 
like a museum hangs it, your museum aspirant, but the problem, you aspire to be in the museum, but the problem is the museum, they're looking at what's the museum of tomorrow gonna look like, and most people are hanging for the museum of, of today. They're fighting last year's war, so to speak. So, uh, so speak, speak, speak. So I needed, I was looking for a bad eye, and I found it. <laughs> <laughs> About five years ago, I really did. And uh, it was, he didn't know this yet, but I knew he's the guy to speak his, his own personal vision, and he doesn't care about shit. And I, I knew um, that I will find a kindred spirit in him. And I was right. And how he hanged it and how he approached the show, I'm like beyond. I'm very pleased. I'm very happy. And I don't know. I can't praise Matt enough. Well, I did, I did want to embrace, like, uh, there's an unconventionality here. So I, I did want to embrace that. You know, and if you just give, if you just, if you just keep hanging the shows like you've always hung them, and I'm not even saying this is, I mean, I'm not going to pat myself on the back like this is the most radical thing. It's just, there's a way to respond to the work curatorially and the energy. What I found like when, at my, uh, at my gallery, a lot of artists, they get a solo show and they know what they want. And so you can't really say, let's do something crazy out of respect for this, for this person's, you know, out of respect for somebody who's worked a year to put a show on. But with this, the work, had, the work had been, some of it was over a year old. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, there's, and there's combinations of different series here. So I thought this was a chance to really do something uh, a little more experimental, especially with work that was um, really in the mainstream of, of uh, you know, physical object presentation. So can you talk about how you came up with the idea for the wallpaper behind Anna's thesis? I've That's never seen that done say. that way before. Oh, you know what? It, here's what it was. Was it was like this? It was like when you're looking at this. This is so classic, like what men want in a naked woman, right? I mean, they're all you know voluptuous. They're all models, you know. So what I thought was, you know, the men like. They can't see. They're they're looking out. They, we're looking at the woman. They're you know they're they're they got caught. Look, they're all busted. Oh, got you looking, got you looking. You know. So I wanted to like I wanted to make it about that the male gaze. There you know there's a lot of critiques, feminist critiques especially of art about the male gaze that women are just the subordinate object to the desires of men. And so here you have a woman who's painting these you know, classically beautiful for men, women. So I wanted to kind of, I, don't, I wanted to kind of incriminate the men. Like, like here's these paintings of men, like now you're just the wallpaper. And now this is like more of a, about the, the feminine power, the goddess, you know, oh, here's, your, here's your goddess with you, with you kind of exposed as being, you know, one color, one dimension, just boring, nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so that's what I was going to ask, but Anna, oh. <laughs> so when you painted those, because they seem so different to me, that I'm assuming that's a different time period. Yeah, so when Matt... The men I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, when Matt asked me to make a bunch of men on paper, so some of these paintings are from models, and they're, okay. they're, you can tell the ones. These are real models, they're real women, they're voluptuous. Um, and these paintings are a little bit older. These four right here, you can see. He asked me to do all these paintings of men, and I'm like, ooh, I don't have that many male models that I can call on in the next two months, plus it would cost me a fortune. Magazine. So I used a stack of 1970 Playboy like magazines. That's what it looks like to those me. Are, incredible. Those they're are really just good. ads, and they're editorials, guys. and they're all from Playboy magazines. In the 70s. Oh, yes. In the 70s. Yes. You can look at their lapels oh, yeah. they're all and their ties. And I was like, yeah. I know you didn't paint these in the 70s. No, no, no. <laughs> they were from the, that's from it. And then these four paintings I made specifically for the show, these three and that one, those are different because those are also from the 70s. Those mm -hmm. are Playboy Bunny from the 70s. Um, I like those images because it's pre Photoshop, they're girl next door, they're non surgical. They're awkward, there's They're tan women. lines, <laughs> but you can tell the photographer, the photographer was like, stick your butt out more, and you know, <laughs> and they're really awkward, but they're also sort of 
innocent compared to what pornography is today. Mm. And so that's why I really like those images. So it's, a, it's sort of a direction my work is going in right now, but it's definitely images from the, because I grew up in the 70s, and you know, I found those Playboy magazines under the bed. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a great yeah. romance yeah. and everything. Yeah. Great. I love that story. And I also think that I, I've been influenced by Lena, you know, because she's so confident, she's so quick with the paper, yeah. she's so, you know, <laughs> she's just, she makes these really beautiful paintings, and you know they're, they're just, there's no planning, they're just movement, and so that's also what I was trying to do. I mean, I was trying to do a painting every 15 minutes in the, with those quick ones, because I had to do a lot of them quickly. So that's where that's I, I think personally that how men can do stuff is society. Yeah. Really, it's Very a question. Uh, it's a weird <laughs> Be humble. <laughs> no, but really, it's just amazing. Remember it. I don't know, it's just amazing. The oil with the sketches, that's it. I just think when, you, when you're hanging a show, it, there's contrast. It's gonna, the contrast can, well, I mean, a lot of times you take risks and, and it just flops. I mean, you know, I've had to do shows, I've done shows, like, especially like in an art fair where you try to do something experimental, and you're like, yeah, we're basically, this is Walmart. You gotta, we gotta, we gotta put it back to like, you know, well, having, having, having your stuff up for sale. But, um, but you try to do some experimental, but when you use a lot of contrasts, um, if it works, it can be so much more dynamic than, than what we've become used to with the classic center line. I think, you know, I think, I don't want to say that we're entering a salon style era. I think it's something different, but, but this is, this is more, you know, using, using the idea of some of your art is just wallpaper and then some of it, you know, and that wallpaper actually, the, the, the thing that you don't want to think about your art, that there's something disposable about it. All that does is emphasize how much more uh, potent the potency of the the other art is. So that's what I tried to do. Yeah, she just, she just, she just, I think she's seated because I definitely when I saw those men, I thought, gee, they're lawyers. Just, you know, well, it's I thought, interesting that I they're the, it was so perfect. You're looking down on these nudes. Well, they're the ad, they're the ads from Playboy. So. Yeah. You know, when you have the women from from that sort of, uh, yeah. you know, the women that this is what you're this is what you're supposed to aspire to have, but that but the ads are actually in a lot of ways more powerful because that's who you're supposed to be, you the reader of '70s Playboy, you know, which I read as an 11 year old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you then, okay. And now they're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody, and let's give Thank a hand to the nice artists. Oh, so, so, Lena Morose and Anna Stump, I think you guys, you made great art. You made it very easy as a curator to, to, uh, to put on a great show. I was, I was very proud, very, very proud to do this, so give them a hand. And Michelle, Michelle came up with butt naked, so.